will likely be on the scene throughout the night battling that fire. A makeshift memorial now stands in a spot where killed. Family and friends gathered today for a balloon release in her memory. Atlanta police tell us she was shot near the Waffle House on Glenwood Avenue last night. Two other young people were also shot. Both are recovering at the hospital. One man says he heard the gunfire just as he and his friends plan to stop at that restaurant to eat. Just think, I could have been over there because that's where they wanted to eat. So uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking, especially hearing of a young teen being killed. So now we definitely have to stop the violence and take some type of accountability for what it is that we're doing. Investigators say the violence started after a large fight broke out. We are still working to find out if the shooter is in custody. And police are investigating another fatal shooting tonight. This one happening in southwest Atlanta. 22-year-old Antonio Sykes died after he was shot outside of Artisan's Bar and Grill on Peachtree Street. A second man was shot as well. That person is said to be in stable condition. Police say the shooting started after an argument inside the club. So far, no arrests have been made. And the GBI is in a 20-year-old Athens man was shot and killed on Highway 316 near Jackson Trail Road in Barrow County early Saturday morning. Investigators say Katravian Cole was one of two men who were shot. That second victim was taken to the hospital. Investigators say a vehicle pulled up next to their car and someone opened fire. If you have any information on the shooting, call police whatever with some people who were inside a black sedan that was parked in an apartment complex uh, things got a hand the people inside the car started shooting and these uh, folks the man and the woman in their late teens uh, both hit in the arm uh, they are expected to survive the folks in the car took off unfortunately the same as far as the people being uh, surviving can't be said about diamond johnson 15 year old girl who was gunned down outside a waffle house on glenwood avenue in southeast atlanta saturday night uh, that shooting also saw two other teenagers injured. Uh, this all started as some kind of fight, actually multiple fights that were taking place in the area that led up to the shooting. As we mentioned, two other teenagers, both of them boys, were injured in that one. We talked with one of their mothers. My son was right there with Diamond, the one that uh, got killed, and the other boy that got shot in the leg. I don't know, he just took off running. That's when they started shooting, and then she dropped right in front of him. It was wild. This has been the most violence I've seen in the uh, 21 years that I've been here. Even more violence on Peachtree Street Saturday. That's where a man was killed. Uh, he was shot. Another man also shot in the leg. The police say it started as an argument between two men. One, someone started shooting. At this point, they've not been able to identify the man who had died. And on Ira Street in southwest Atlanta on Saturday afternoon, an 11-year-old boy grazed when bullets started to fly yet again, started by an argument. Uh, that caused a number of folks to apparently start shooting. In addition to that 11-year-old boy, a man was shot in the leg, and another man showed up later at the hospital having been shot in the stomach. And we're going to have more on these coming up at 8 o'clock, so make sure you tune in for that. Reporting live from Atlanta Police Headquarters in downtown, I'm Mark Tyson. Show up each and every day with respect and regard for our communities, wanting to have positive interactions with our communities and wanting to return home safely to their families, uh, as well as sending people whom they may enc encounter uh, back home safely to their families as well. So I can't say that enough, uh, and I appreciate the leadership that has been given in the most challenging of times this year. Uh, we are here again on the heels of another child in our city being shot and killed. I remember when I was growing up, my, my best friend Janae's mother, uh, Mrs. Carter, would say, straight bullets, no, no names. And for the third time as mayor, I am standing here to talk about a bullet that took the life of a child in our city. And as we've talked about what I describe as this COVID crime wave, people have asked me, 
if it's possible that I could get up and give a Friday night speech, reminiscent of the one that I gave May 29th. If only it were that simple. If it were that simple, I would give a speech every single day. But it is not that simple. The reality is this. There are too many guns on our streets and too many people in our communities who don't have regard for basic human life. You all uh, covered my state of the city. The state of the city, I made several announcements, putting an additional 250 officers on the street, expanding technology through the use of cameras, increasing the number of license plate readers in our communities. We announced just this week the One Atlanta Light Up the Night initiative, adding 10,000 lights on our streets to help make our communities safer. President Biden mentioned when he visited Georgia on Thursday uh, that I personally asked for money in the American Rescue Fund for our cities so that we could expand violence interruption, violence prevention programs throughout this country. Five billion dollars was put into the American Rescue Plan and I'm grateful for that. Despite the fact that APD has removed 2,000 guns from our streets and arrested more than 700 violent offenders, it's still not enough. And at some point, you know, the, the responsibility has to be taken by all of us. APD responds to crime. You all have heard me say that a man was shot in his driveway, not two doors down from my home, where a police car stays 24 hours a day. He was shot and killed in his garage by someone who had an issue with him. So it is not enough that we have officers on every corner, APD, this weekend had just shown up to a big fight between juveniles that apparently moved to another location and an innocent person was killed. And I, I wish that I could ma wave a magic wand or, or, or give some speech to make it stop. The plan will expand child care and pre-K as well as a, provide a boost in spending for social programs. Then there's also the $2.3 trillion effort to repair infrastructure, something that both parties say they are interested in working on. The Biden administration insists there is room here for a bipartisan deal. I think the American people are long overdue. They've been promised that their infrastructure will be fixed for 50 years. Right. Where is the delivery on that? What? And I think that's really what this is all about. Some conservatives argue these proposed new programs could make too many Americans reliant on the government. And then there's the price tag that even with tax increases on corporate America proposed, Republicans are outraged. When I look at this, this is a staggering amount of spending like someone with a new credit card. And these are for things that we don't necessarily need. We certainly can't afford, but they're going to delight the liberal left of the party. There are indications some Republican lawmakers are going to be making their way to the White House this week to see what kind of deal can be reached. The president, as I mentioned, will be hitting the road. He's going to be visiting a community college in Southern Virginia on Monday and make two stops in Louisiana on Thursday. Also this week, the White House is expected to give us an update about what's going on with the state of the vaccine rollout and the pandemic overall in this country. That'll happen at the same time the U.S. imposes new travel restrictions between the U.S. and India, where COVID cases are surging. Traveling with the president in Wilmington, Delaware, Mark Meredith, Fox News. In Delaware, but it is a quick turnaround with a trip to Virginia this morning. And look at the states the president, the first lady, and the vice president plan to hit this week alone. The president has said his red line is in action, that we cannot afford 
not to make these investments. The White House will be pushing the American Families Plan, $1.8 trillion in social spending, funding universal preschool and community colleges, and the American Jobs Plan, a $2.3 trillion proposal that includes infrastructure and climate change projects. But this is spending on a scale we really haven't seen before. Adjusted for inflation, the New Deal to end the Great Depression cost $856 billion. The rescue plan for the 2009 recession, $1.8 trillion. In just his first 100 days, President Biden has proposed spending $6 trillion. That number is a non-starter for Republicans on Capitol Hill, but the GOP is floating narrower proposals for traditional infrastructure projects, and there may be some common ground. We're talking physical road bridges, ports, waterways, uh, broadband, um, you know, and, and those types of, of uh, really job-creating infrastructure projects that we need to modernize our transportation and other systems. Uh, we're, we're working with the White House, and I think it's been very open door. But Democrats are also preparing to go this alone if they have to, assuming there's enough support within their own party. In Washington, Doug Luzader, Fox News. People aboard try to climb to the other side of the railing. Others are tossed overboard. Life jackets and debris are scattered throughout the water. The boat eventually breaks into pieces. In three minutes, this boat had been turned to rubble. Multiple agencies responded. More than 100 emergency workers rushed to the scene, groundwater and air. Most of the people were able to walk themselves uh, or swim the shoreline, but there was uh, six to seven people who just got sucked out that rip and were just uh, getting pulled out to sea. That's when the lifeguard, the jet skis, and rescue vessels were putting people on board the vessel. Before first responders arrived around 10.30, witnesses say around 10 people jumped into the water to help. Anita Beckman is one of them. I just feel really bad for them. They're all scared, hungry, thirsty. Yeah, and they're all and in danger. Back, so. yeah. And in danger. They were afraid for their lives. She spoke to the victims aboard about their journey. After a boat off the coast of San Diego capsized and then broke apart this morning. Authorities believe the boat was part of a smuggling operation. A Border Patrol source says the overturned ship was a fishing boat carrying close to 30 people. The area is only about 15 miles away from the U.S.-Mexico border. Today, community members march for Andrew Brown Jr. ahead of his funeral tomorrow. He is the black man who was reportedly shot in the head by deputies in Elizabeth City, North Carolina last month. Two public viewings were held today. Many say they are outraged because of authorities' failure to release the entire police body cam video. A judge has denied a request for a public release of the video as the investigation gets underway. And they're dying as a result of that. The DEA has been helping Floyd County investigate some of these cases, helping them to try to get the dealers behind bars. In Floyd County, Denise Stillen, Fox 5 News. Have you had a family member of yours OD and died because of fentanyl? I'll tell you what, as long as that border stays open like it is right now, more fentanyl is going to get into this country. So, you had a family member die from an overdose, and you thank the Biden administration for that. Three-time offenders can have their license revoked completely. HB 534 simply adds another tool to the tool belt for these officers to help keep our streets safe. The new law will clarify what it means to engage in reckless street racing, lay out penalties for habitual violators, and now makes it a crime to facilitate or organize one of these dangerous events. Our goal is simple, to protect every family and every community. This comes on the heels of another active weekend of street racing in the city. Towing their cars has not stopped them, neither has locking them up. Now, one local court's taking an additional step to try to get the attention of the street racers. 
Fox has more Stiggs tells us about drivers who've had their licenses yanked and why this legal strategy is stirring controversy. Well, taking their license, that could cause some punishment, some long-lasting pain. Because most of these street racers, well, they have school or they have a job to get to. They have a need to drive when they're not performing donuts. Sunday evening in a residential Buckhead neighborhood, if families attempted to enjoy a meal on the deck, burned rubber had to be an unwelcome odor. A young man has previously enjoyed the thrill of lane drag performing donuts, according to the authorities. And before that, in a different incident, a lot of speed on I-20. How fast was he going? 143 miles per hour. I, I don't think I've ever owned a car that can hit 140 going downhill with the wind. Howard Shook, a Buckhead City Councilman, has seen police try to tow away the cars of street racers, but they get them right back. Lock the drivers up, but they get back out in a matter of hours. So, what can stick as real punishment? Well, for Antonio Ojeda, his record was enough for the Atlanta court to take additional action. A judge last month suspended Ojeda's license, sending the order to the State Department of Driver Services, DDS. We'll see what happens. I, I, I applaud the judge. It is extraordinarily dangerous and puts the public at risk. And, you know, what's going to happen when a family of four gets killed? The judge in this case had good intentions. It was simply worded improperly. Attorney Jackie Patterson, himself a former judge, does not think the Atlanta court action can stand up if challenged. The judge has no authority to suspend a person's driver's license prior to them being adjudicated guilty. Now, the judge does have the authority to order as a condition of their bond that they do not drive, but that is a different matter from actually suspending their driver's license and sending it to the Department of Driver Services. In addition to that young man who was clocked at well over 100 miles an hour, there is a second case, a man who had six super speeder tickets in a period of just six years. His license was also taken. So now once our story makes the rounds, I would not be surprised if some defense attorneys mount a challenge. From Northeast Atlanta, I'm Morse Diggs, Fox 5 News. Two people were killed when a gunman opened fire at the Oneida Casino. Officials are calling the attack targeted. The Brown County Sheriff's Office believes the gunman was looking for someone. Investigators say that person was not at the casino, but the gunman started shooting anyway. Officers shot and killed the shooter. Developing tonight, three people will likely be on the scene throughout the night battling that fire. A makeshift memorial now stands in the spot where income countries increase their vaccine supply without having to rely on wealthier nations. And more COVID-19 vaccine choices coming to the mass vaccination site set up across the state. Details when we come back. Six. When the election was stolen, Amen. that there was fraud. Bishop Reginald Jackson of the AME Church had faith leaders use nails as a symbol of their commitment to drive home their fight against the law. They say restricts the ability of black and brown voters to cast a economic rather than a national security threat. In my discussion with President Xi, I told him, we welcome the competition. We're not looking for conflict. Last year, President Trump also banned all federal government workers from using TikTok because of the threat. Fox News can confirm the Biden administration has kept that ban in place. Something you might want to think about the next time you open the app. In Washington, Jillian Turner, Fox News postpone promotions due to the pandemic. Meantime, builders are still getting back on track. Construction spending rising slightly in March led higher by private residential and commercial projects. Overall spending in the first quarter of the year up around 4.5% from this time back in 2020. But higher prices are putting more pressure on U.S. factories. A closely watched report showing the manufacturing sector produced at a slower pace than expected in April. The main reason? rising costs for raw materials. To Wall Street and so much for the idea of selling in May. The Dow rising 238 points on Monday to start the new trading month. That's business. I'm Jerry Willis.